I'm Kevin Reed, as I just said, um, in my 27th year in the fire service, I'm um, a captain, I'm the most senior black firefighter that we have. Um, we, uh, we launched a human rights case against the fire service um, quite a few years back um, regarding systemic discrimination and uh, racism. Uh, we, at, the, at the time, we had an option of uh, you know, taking a pound of flesh or handling it restoratively, and we opted for a restorative. And that's where I met Jennifer Llewellyn. Um, she still, to this day, is, is amazed at how we un have such a depth and understanding of what a restorative approach is. And she, you know, she loves us. But I, for me, I, it's, <laughs> it's, for me it's, just, it's just the way I operate. It's, it's how I handle my family life. It's how I deal with my station crew. It's, it's how I deal with my division. I'm, I'm, I'm acting divisional commander as well in the fire service, which means I'm responsible for a whole platoon at times. So that, this is how I deal with it. Uh, so she asked me to speak today. So um, when we uh, oh, I'll get back to the case, so when when we uh, when we decided to go restoratively, fire department, management, and uh, city, we all came together, and it was a long, grueling process. Lots of circles, lots of lots of emotions, and lots of you know. I mean, at the time, the fire service didn't even know how to spell restorative because it's the first time that they ever like, whoa, what's this? So uh, I mean, we had to do like checks at the door and make sure they they leave all their clubs and their bats outside so they wouldn't have to beat anybody. But uh, but I'm happy to say that three years ago we had a successful completion of the uh, of our of our case, which uh, which was we were very happy and we out of that process we got Chief Doug Trussler, who's in the room today, uh, one of the best chiefs that I've ever served under. So. Coming back to me speaking today, um, I asked Jennifer, I said, well, what is it you want me to speak about? And so she gave me a couple questions that, uh, that, that I should answer. And I have a, a restorative, uh, I'm, I'm the head of this restorative uh, committee that we have for the fire department that is responsible for implementing a restorative approach. So there's four of us. So I shot these questions out to them and uh, collaboratively we answered. So here I go. So I'm going to give you an overview of the potential and significance of a restorative approach for dealing with and addressing issues of inclusion and building a healthy workplace climate drawn from our experience. So for me, the potential is that we get a chance to do things differently. Fire, like most uh, uniform service, has a habit of eating our young and killing our wounded. We grind out rookies like grain into flour, and people who make mistakes are eaten alive and labeled for life. Not to mention, if one person makes a mistake, sometimes we'll uh, label the entire platoon or the tired job from one mistake. Um, this is because we have only one way of dealing with things, and that's to assume the worst and punish or treat them accordingly. As a result, we lose good people who have lots of great ideas and lots of drive and turning them, turning them into tired, toe-the-line types with no drive and no initiative who count the days to retirement. But with a restorative approach, we have a chance to mentor rather than beat up, guide rather than beat down, and give people the tools they need to overcome their mistakes and flourish rather than be labeled and marked by them. Errors and bad attitudes become opportunities for change to empower people rather than the measure by which they are beaten down. It also gives people the chance to meet the things they desire in a close-knit group. People want to feel like they belong, they have some, something to contribute, that they have a voice, and that they can be heard. A restorative approach meets these needs and can empower people to enter in and take a higher role in the workplace. How is this connected to how discipline is dealt with? Well, consequence is at the heart of every action, both good and bad. A restorative approach isn't necessarily different. Discipline does not have to be synonymous with punishment. In a worst case scenario, if actions are extremely damaging or dangerous, there may be few options to correct behavior and ensure safe working environments. However, if that's joined with sharing experiences and considering the effect personal actions have on others, the outcome, even with discipline, has better potential and not being repeated. So I'll give you some of the challenges and opportunities of working restoratively in a command and control environment. The way we operate is the biggest liability to a successful restorative approach. For such a method of leadership to be effective, we need skills in effective listening, team building, conflict resolution, and empowering those underneath us. But we have a system that promotes officers, fire officers, based on enforcing rules and measures their ability to command a scene. We've done a wonderful job at evaluating um, and promoting great fire ground officers, people who identify an emergency when it's in a serious state. We know how to hit it hard, hit it fast, get the job done, get it out, make a mess. All right, and, and we clap hands when we're done because we did a good job. But then the follow-up's left to someone else to clean up. 
This is what we do at all of our emergencies. Now imagine our frustration because all of our interpersonal relationships in the workplace are handled this way. It's not our fault. We've been trained to act this way. We demand our orders to be followed with no input. We demand it immediately. People are seen as resources and no, and no other way. This is the fire ground mentality. And, and to be this way for an effective chain of command, it has to be this way for an effective chain of command and fire ground tactics. But station life's different, and people need to be treated and talked to a bit differently. I know officers who are brilliant on the fire ground and are terrible in the station because they, they can't stop seeing people as resources. So we, uh, we need buy-in. Buy-in is one of the challenges. We don't understand what restorative means. And that's right across the board in the fire department. We have three levels. We have the union, we have management, and we also have the city itself, HR, for example. The, 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 when you talk to the union about that, they say, oh, we're going to sit around and hold hands and hug each other. That's, that's not it, right? And then the management, just sometimes they only can see, well, you can't take away our right to discipline. Well, that's not what we're talking about. And then HR also doesn't even believe in a restorative approach. They, I don't say they don't believe in it. They believe that it's, it's a tool in a, the toolkit when a restorative approach is a way of being. Um, we also have uh, homogeneity. We have a long history of influence by very similar shared experiences and backgrounds. And it's difficult to break the mold when every mold we see is the same. So people need to be listened to in the station to discover why they're doing something. If we all understand each other and our motivations, a lot of conflict will never arise. Conflict becomes conversation. Rejection becomes respect. And the workplace becomes better for it. So ways to do this in a command and control environment? We need leadership, not management. This is a huge influence. When people see someone set a good example, they want to follow. When good outcomes are reached, future efforts become more worthwhile. Someone has to take the opportunity to take the high road. I've lost count of the times I've praised and thanked crews on a job well done at a fire, only to have someone tell me that my praise is out of the ordinary. Several people have told me that they have never been thanked for doing a job, a great job before. In fact, we like to, if you do a good job all the time, we like to say, oh, look at that guy. He, they like to pick out something that we didn't do right as opposed to something that we... You know what I'm trying to say? And it's made myself like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, like they pick out the negatives. Yes, thank you. Pick out the negatives as, as to point out the positives. Um, yes, thank you. Oh, I whispered. Um, I also found that admitting when you're wrong, and it does happen sometimes to officers, it gains a level, level of trust that can't be brought any other way. A leader who shows that they are human and vulnerable is a strength, not a weakness, as we have led to, been led to believe. Likewise, pointing out that we could, we, could do, we could do better, praise towards a better outcome, works far better than the typical way we do it. And dealing with issues that are small and manageable is far better than letting them grow into the monster that can't be tamed. Thank you.